those beatings, those people are resisting arrest. Here's a video for the unique melody M-E-X-T. It's a cousin of the M-E-S-T first and second version, slightly different configuration. This is the music. Let's go ahead and start. Um, this is the music before we continue. The Some people have asked if this is a collaboration of some kind, like without the name on it, but a background club. No, there's, there's none. I would be open to that, absolutely. But in this case, this is a uh, unique melody creation. From the beginning to the end, I had no say or anything with this. Um, so this is not most everything else coming out recently is collaboration, but this is not a collaboration set. So just full disclosure, this is the music that I listen to for all IEMs that I evaluate. Just a reminder, I put this up every two or three videos. You can stop this right now and take a look at the track name, the thing that I'm listening for, and the part of the song where it, that steps out. It might be at the intro. It might be. 236 to 310 and you can follow this along if you'd like if you have kind of OCD traits or you really have a strong focus and you want to what the hell is he talking about this is the cheat sheet right here please check it out it's very important I listen to lots of music but I definitely listen to these for the bass for the mids for the treble and for OCD it's all OCD really this is the set they are absolutely gorgeous looking holy crap um, I'm going to put a video on Twitter tomorrow. There's a two minute limit for Twitter videos and I hold the up close in the hand and you can take a look at the craftsmanship on this set. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. I will show you the universal version and I'll probably end up showing you the CIM more. And that's two reasons. One, the CIM of sets that have bone conduction units are obviously going to have more, uh, effect because they're contacting the skin and the side of your ears more than a UIM. And it's so beautiful to look at. So this is probably going to steal the show tomorrow. But if you want to see these both close up, go below this video, pause it now, go to the comment section, and pin to the top of the comment section should be the Twitter video that I record after this video tomorrow in the morning. And then I'll go ahead and put this up so you can get the close-up look at it as well as what we're doing now. This is the frequency graph. This is the frequency graph as it relates to the Master Mark II. That's the frequency graph again. Let's go ahead and talk about this real quick. Unique Melody Mix, 1DD, 4BA, 1 dual bow conduction driver. I believe that's what it is. Bass on the mix is elevated more than Mess Mark II. It gives emphasis to bass guitar, drums, and male vocals. BC driver is audibly giving energy to four-string bass, but not hip-hop drops. It's interesting. Male vocals sound more lively than Mess Mark II. Mids. Mids are typical to the Mess family, clean and accurate with no veiling or scoop. Vocals, guitar, piano all sound great as they do on the Mess series IMs. If there's one thing that the Mess group of IMs is, it's very clear. It's intense in its clarity. People that love micro details really love this set. Treble. The treble is less fatiguing than the Mess, Mess Mark II. One of the biggest issues with the Mess is fatigue via overwhelming sense of info. Great problem, but still a bit much for some. Mex would be for them. It would also suit listeners who like a lively sound with longer listening sessions. Cymbals, guitar, distortion pedals, and keyboards all sound accurate. The third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh um, harmonics, overtones are all there. They're appropriate and over emphasized. Cymbals don't sound weird. Electric guitars don't sound overwhelmingly intense. Um, Mess Mark II and the original can after a period of time that can become intense that's probably where the mex really shines it gives a uh, more friendly long-term listen let's go ahead and talk about music but big boy by kill jill is a interesting track because it's got a bass drop and it's got a it's a triple bass drop and then it's got a a sample of or also a forcing bass guitarist that follows that listening to this set of earphones and this one at 77 db as always the bass drop was good it didn't stand out as much as i was expecting it to however when the bass guitar came in that stood out and i'll talk about that at the end of this video that was notable in its awesomeness was the bass guitar everybody knows i always talk about that it sounded really really nice on this set more so than on the other m-e-s-t or m-e 
versions of Enoch Melody. This was impressive and very nice. Listening to Black Sabbath, Masters of Reality, where the bass guitarist and the drummer at 2 minute 30 to 2.36 kind of are very close together. They're, ha they're basically doing solos at the same time. They're occupying the same part of the frequency response area. They're kind of overlapping and they're happening at the same time and they can mask and kind of cancel each other out or diminish the perceived quality of one or the other or both and kind of blob up. It sounds good on this set. I very much enjoyed the low frequency replay on this set and I thought it was very clean and accurate. Elevated but clean and accurate. It had a great impact on vocals. 400 hertz is an interesting spot. The electric guitar the acoustic guitar at the beginning of this track was good. Stephen Wood's vocals were good. The cymbal strikes at 30, 27 and 38 were good. Um, quad ESTs and BAs, I'd take quad ESTs, but that's the indigo. The other mess have um, two ESTs in them, actually. Listening to Sultans of Swing, where I'm checking mid bass, this has elevated mid bass. Again, the forcing bass guitar is where the energy of this driver is really showing itself, and not really prior to that. But the bassist is definitely stepping out, not in volume, but in, in sense of presence, the bassist. For me, this is awesome because I love a good bass line, and the clearer, the better. And this is really where this set shines. I want to go ahead and show something real quick. This is the specifications. When I got this set and I listened to this set, I was I had seen a comment on HeadFi. And it was uh, I'm not shading on him. I believe he is a reviewer as well and he was probably going off of another person's comment. And I saw his comment and it said that the bone conduction driver was taking care up to 200 hertz. And I thought, "Okay, well that sounds cool in itself because that'll be, you know, that's like a low frequency subwoofer." with energy and vibing, so I'll, that'll be a neat experience. And then when I tried and listened to it, it didn't really pan out that way, but bass guitar was stepping out, and vocals to some extent. According to the specifications, which I checked after I experienced that, sensation of vibration conduction at 1 kilohertz, peak at 400 hertz. If I'm reading this correctly, that's indicating that this driver's peak performance is being a vibrating bone conduction driver, occurs around 400 hertz. If I'm reading this correctly, that means that the graph, let's take this out, take that out. This is 400 hertz right here. It's got a little unique little correction. It's got a slightly odd bump prior 300 to 400, just a little one, but I noticed it when I did the original graph on an iPad using the 711 um, clone mic that I use and have been using for a long time. I thought that this looks unique. And then I remembered the Evo, and it's in the same spot. So this is the impact of a actual, really, that type of bone conduction driver when you send a signal through and you get back the frequency response. What, what the drivers are doing themselves or collectively, if it's a hybrid or tribrid, and what the response coming back out at 1 kilohertz is. And it's making an impact right here. Now... Before I continue, I want to talk about something because this is important to the whole understanding of how bone conduction works. If you take a set like the Kato, which is a set that I like and recommended. Let me put this in yellow so it's easier to see. There we go. This is a very typical gain region. It's a dynamic driver. It's very typical. If you take your Kato or something like that, while you are using a low 2 DAP, which is what I did when I did this, and you pull down this region between 1 and 5K to the level that the MEST or the MEXT is, it will greatly diminish the quality of vocals, male or female, it doesn't matter. So why does the MEST get away with this type of profile and still give you energetic, authentic vocal replay? Because the bone conduction driver is actually doing something. And proof of that is taking another type of configuration and trying to mimic and clone another set. If you do this like I did with something like the Kato and you do this profile, you are going to get back very poor vocal replay. Or not what I would recommend to anybody. That's why this is not a common type of tuning, but the mess gets away with it. Now, what's the point of that? I'll explain to you. This is the Evo and it has greatly 
th this is my target, and this is way over that. This is way over that. It's a, a giant V. That's fine. I bought the LX four times. I spent lots of money on that. I want to explain something to you so you understand. If you have a car audio system, and you have, a, or, or home, but let's say car audio system, it's many thousands of dollars. It's been time corrected, positioned for the driver seat. Um, you got tweeters, you got mid drivers, you've got subwoofers in the back, and you've got it tuned so that it's for clarity with a slight low end emphasis. So your subs are putting in work, but they're not overwhelming. And you listen to Earth, Wind, and Fire September, and you're just jamming, and it sounds about as close to being, it's a very controlled space, a car, and you can really do it well and with all the deadening material, and you can make it a just an epic music experience zone. Very nice. Earth, Wind, and Fire, September. Y y like being there. I've done this. Now get out of the car, go to the back, and turn up the gain to about the threshold that your, your subwoofers can take. Get back in and play it again. It's going to sound like you're standing near the bassist amps. It's, you're not going to be able to hear the quality of the horns and everything else that goes in this because the bass is diminishing your ability to perceive the other drivers. Key point, your mids are still doing what they were doing 10 minutes ago. Your tweeters are still doing what they were doing 10 minutes ago. Your ears can't pick that up because you've just impeded them and taken away their ability to perceive other things by overwhelming them with low frequency sound. When you take a bone conduction driver and place it inside of an earphone and you put two dynamic drivers and you put other drivers in the treble, it loses its point. You can't perceive it. If you have something that's more subtle, you can. And that's why the mess became so popular. The MEXT is a very good set. It does low frequency, I think, better than the mess series because of the way that they're focusing this bone conduction driver. And they're allowing you to sense it because they're not bombarding you with multiple drivers or ridiculous tuning. You get the benefit in the upper mids and treble because that's what the bone conduction driver does. You might not like the quality of the treble compared to ESTs if I think that's a psychological thing but all of my top S tier IMs are pretty much four ESTs in the treble. The Elysian Acoustic Guide besides the Z1R. Um, it's something that I like when it's done well. That will, might be the point that some people don't find it to be as good we take a look at something like Boston foreplay it's been such a long time there's a lot of uh, upper frequency energy going on here but you can see check a live track they just go nuts with this and it's I think it sounds good does it sound as good as the indigo no audibly different than that does it sound as good as the mest good that depends on what you're going for are you going for a relaxed this it's not like BAs are bad there's lots of the U12T has BAs. There's lots of great sets that have BAs in the treble. Um, I'd put this in that group. It's done well. Does it sound the same as ESTs? I can't tell if it's a bias or not because when listening to it, not really. There's not really a difference. But my brain, I'm a human being. I think I prefer four ESTs in the treble. But I got to try. And then there's probably me blowing smoke in my own ass at the same time. The Glockenspiel, Bruce Springsteen, Born to Run. It's a very, very high frequency instrument. Ding, 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 ding. I thought it sounded great. It's not screaming. When I A, B between the MEST Mark II and this set, I find this to be the set that I would enjoy for longer term listening. The graph indicates that would be the case. It is, in fact, the case when I listen to it. I have CIMs of the first and the second version and also the MEX. The MEX would be the set. This There's new item hype, too, right? That's true. And it does look really gorgeous, but I really enjoy listening to this set. Would you enjoy listening to it? If you thought that the original Mest first or second verse was a little bit intense, yes, this would be for you. If you thought that the original first and second version of the Mest was not giving you the thump and punch that you wanted, then yes, this would be for you. That's the two audiences that this set is targeting. I think that's a pretty good size audience. I think they did a great job. I would recommend that you get the CIEM version just because it's just so god damn gorgeous the sure ej07 originals custom is my favorite all time this is 
I got to put them in like a battle. That it's just so epic. Really, really nice. Um, very nice job by Unique Melody. Very appreciative for the chance. So I think it's got good bass um, for my library. I think the mids are typical to the mess, which is to say that it's b great. I think the treble is very good, very much like the mess first and second generation, with a little bit less intensity, um, particularly versus the indigo with the four ESTs. That depends on what you want. So it gets the wreck because it's a great set. I would check out the CIEM if, if I were you. I'm not sure what the price is on that. Check out Andrew at Music Tech. Um, people who've been in the hobby, especially the high tier Summit Fi stuff, Andrew's the guy. If he can do something, he does it and he says it. And if he can, he tells you and you can move along quickly. He's an absolute pro's pro. Uh, link to his shop will be below. Thank you for the opportunity to review this. I think it's a fantastic set. And I will see you guys in the next video. And I'm out.